welcome, ladies and gentlemen, live from the Houston Astrodome. I'm Bubba Haley with the Class 3A semifinal playoffs between the Marble Falls Mustangs and the Cold Spring Trojans. This Astrodome is already rocking. There is probably over a thousand people here in the Astrodome from the Cold Spring side and equally as many from the Marble Falls side. I have also with me uh, that is helping me doing some announcing from the field, Tom Brown. Tom will be roaming around on the field. He'll also be going up into the stands and talking to some of the coaches. Tom, tell me a little bit about uh, on the field right now. What's the feeling like after uh, talking to some of the crowd and some of the players? Well, as you can hear uh, most of the uh, noise going on, everybody's pretty excited about uh, what's happening down here today. I uh, haven't got a chance to talk to any of the players or coaches yet, but uh, all the uh, fans are really excited, and I don't think they're missing Christmas on the square yet. And for the people that aren't able to be here, we're broadcasting live on 92.3 FM. We have our remote unit that is set up on the courthouse square, and uh, we are broadcasting live to all those that are listening live from the Astrodome. Now, going on right now in the stadium is uh, just cheering back and forth from side to side. Uh, the uh, prayer and the school songs have just played. Also, we have on the left side of the field on the dome, we have the cheerleaders and drill teams waiting to run through the banners as they run through the uh, west gate. We'll begin here in just a few moments. We want to uh, give you starting lineups and some, tell you some things that uh, will be uh, going on. Santa Claus coming in on the far side. You'll hear the crowd react to that. And here comes the Cold Spring Trojans. Listen to that crowd. Santa Claus leads him out on the field uh, with his red and white pom-poms. We'll be talking with uh, various people from time to time coming up in the press box. Superintendent of uh, Cold Spring School, Larry Bennett, was up here just a few moments ago. We've had some coaches. The uh, crowd is extremely excited here tonight at the Dome this afternoon. It is almost a uh, full house here at the dome on the lower level. Now, of course, there's no way that you can fill the entire dome, of course, but, but here we have the lower levels of the Astrodome that are filled with cheering 3A high school football players. I'm Bubba Haley. We are live from the Houston Astrodome. Tom Brown's on the field. He'll be joining us from time to time. We'll be uh, waiting for our national anthem coming up in just a few moments, uh, dressed in all red, uh, white helmets, and white shoes is the Cold Spring Trojans, and they are lined up in the end zone on the far side. And I would imagine in just a few moments, we're going to uh, hear a crowd from a far side uh, that are purple and white. You're going to hear Trojans. Well, and if you are familiar football fans with the Denver Broncos, that is their sort of offense. They have a quarterback that doesn't mind running the ball, and they also have a quarterback that can run. And he's a big quarterback and very impressive. We'll be telling you more about him. Of course, Cold Spring has three outstanding men on offense. Parks, Fisher, and Reese. You'll be hearing a lot about them, and we'll be giving you some statistics about how they have been playing throughout the season. Dressed in gold pants, white jerseys with purple numbers and Notre Dame Helmets, solid gold-colored helmets, white jerseys with purple numbers and gold pants. The Marble Falls Mustangs.
as the District 19 3A and Region 3 3A champions, Cold Creek Trojans. The majority of the fans here in the stands have red and white pom poms. Trojans dressed in solid red, white numbers, white helmets. The captains will be coming out on the field in just a few moments. This is the Class 3A semifinal. The champion of Region 3, Cold Spring, playing the winner of Region 4, Marble Falls. Now over in Region 1 and Region 2 in semifinals, it's South Lake Carroll and Gainesville. The final will be December the 19th. That will be for the state 3A championship. Standing in the middle of the field, the captains of Cold Spring and Marble Falls. said the Trojans won the toss. Uh, that seems to be a good luck sign for the Trojans when they win the toss to start the game, so the kids are pretty excited about that. Does normally when Cold Spring win a toss, what does that uh, generally do for them if they can go ahead and score and get on the board? Does emotions play a big part in up and downs with this team? Oh, absolutely. I think it does with any team. Uh, the uh, Trojans have won the flip, I think, in every playoff game so far. Now, we want to get some interviews in just a few moments. We've got some players and some coaches, but things are going to start really picking up down there. And also, we got uh, some people in the stands as we start going. Tom will go around and get some interviews from those people in the stand. Tom, I'll try to keep my eye on you down there. If uh, you'll wave your hand and uh, whenever you find something, I'll, I'll try to keep up with you and wave, wave at me up here, and I'll uh, I'll come back to you in just a few moments. Okay. But I'll also be listening to you in this other ear. Will do. So if you got something, call me. Okay. We're live up in a booth behind the Astrodome. It's that middle black level, a little small level right in the middle of the uh, Astrodome. We have a radio and TV booth up here. Tom Brown is doing interviews from the field. Here we go. From the Astrodome, semifinal 3A playoff. The Cold Spring Trojans and the Marble Falls Mustangs is underway. Beautiful kick right down to the five-yard line. Take it to one. At the 10, 15, to the 20, 25. He's still good. Look at him at the 40, 45-yard line. Flag goes down late. 45-yard line, number 36, Daryl Mims. Beautiful run from the one-yard line. We do have a flag on the play. No, wait, now the referee uh, waves that flag off. Cole Spring with a great jump out. First possession of the afternoon. Cold Spring has the ball on their own 45-yard line. 39-yard kickoff return from the 45. Reese. Oh, flags go down. A lot of motion in there. And he's going to be uh, could be a pulled off sides. That people this will go against Cold Spring. Procedure against Cold Spring cost them five yards. We're going to move it back to the 40 yard line. After what the Cold Spring Trojans have endured this fall playing in the 3A state semifinals won't even be the hardest assignment of the season. The Trojans are 13 and 1, and they are playing Marble Falls right now in the dome, who are 13 0 and 1. Both schools are hoping for a berth in next week's championship game. Reeves back to pass, looking, looking. 
He's going to keep it. Gets up to about the 40, uh, about 44 yard line before being pulled out of bounds. Arthur Reese forced to keep it. Good coverage by the Marble Falls defense. Starting offense for the Cold Spring Trojans. Arthur Reese, number 10. Fullback Ray Fisher, number 34. Roderick Parks, number 24 in running back. At wide receiver, Leonard McKinney, number 82. It is second down and 11. Cold Spring with the ball, first possession of the afternoon. Handoff up the middle goes to Fisher. He gets three yards. Third down and seven. Ball close to midfield. Rounding out the offense. Tight end, Eric Benestani, number 80. Another tight end, Kevin Reed, number 84. Right tackle, Ed Spiller, number 74. Joe Robinson, number 58, at right guard. Clint Botard is center at number 50. John Blankenmeyer, number 69, at left guard. And left tackle is Chad McQueen, number 65. Third and nine for the T-Dog. Up the middle, the quarterback gets three, and that's all. They will be punting. Cole Springs, first four possessions, lead in one penalty for five yards. And they only picked up about eight yards on the ground during their first drive. The punter will be standing back on his own 36-yard line. The receivers are at their 20. Fourth and seven. The punt low, it hits the ground. He gets it away, no rush. It's gonna hit it about the 20. Ball still rolling, it's at the 10, five, get out! Parks. Excuse me, that's Fisher. He gets four yards. 
Fisher has 32 touchdowns so far throughout his season this year, 278 carries. Think about this, 278 carries, 2,583 yards. He gets about 10 yards or nine yards every time he gets it. Per game, it's like 20 carries, 185 yards. Second down and five. Hand off to Parks. He gets about three to four yards, and it's going to be up close to the 35, 36 yard line. Going to be short of a first down by about two yards, I believe, after they mark it. It's going to be third down now and two. Ball on the 36 yard line of the Mustangs. One man split far left. We're going left to right across your radio. Back handoff up the middle is Fisher. I believe he's got the first. It's going to be close. He just gets a couple of yards on that. Fourth down. He didn't get it. It is like a, a half a yard short. I believe, yeah, they're going far. Cold Springs going far on fourth and about a yard. Ball's on the 35-yard line. The stands are now standing up. The fans are on their feet cheering for fourth and a yard. Option play, handoff. He, oh, fumble. Ball's down on the ground. It's loose. It's not a first down no matter what, and Marble Falls recovers the ball. Fumble, and Marble Falls recovers on their own 36-yard line. One of the first turnovers there tonight. Tom, tell me how uh, Cold Spring handles turnovers. Well, Bubba, most of the time on turnovers, it doesn't seem to affect the team too much. They usually come back from them, you know, real well. First and 10, I formation, ends are split. Option play to the right, pitches in the back. He's got about three yards and that's it. Second down and about six. Marble Falls with the ball, their second possession. First time they had the ball, four downs and punting. Up the middle, got some room, he's at the 50. Quarterback keeps it down. First down, he picks up about 10 yards. First first down for Marble Falls. The quarterback, number 12, Blaine Clip. Run the triple option. They run a eye formation at times. Two men in the backfield, two split ends. The quarterback can run it and he can throw it. They like to run the option. Eye formation, first and 10. They're in Cold Springs into the field. Handoff. Trap play picks him up about four yards. Takes off from the tackle position. Gets a second down now at about six. Second down, six. We're on the 43-yard line. 6.37 left to go in the first quarter. No score. Clint calling the signal. Option play. Throws it now. Got a man open on the far side and over throws him. Had a man open on the far side of the field on the 20-yard line. Incomplete pass. That would have put him down at about the 15-yard line if he had caught that on the uh, far end of the field. Third down now and six. Strong side to the left. Eye formation, handoff, first man through, gets it. Three, two yards, that's it. He's gonna bring up a fourth down at about four. Tom? Uh, yes, Bubba, I have with me here on the sideline, Reginald Phipps. Let me get him turned around here. Uh, we'll, we'll be, I'll be right back with you in just a minute. We uh, have a, uh, a player who hurt his knee during the first of the season and is in a wheelchair on the field right now. Fourth down and four, punting situation. Cold Spring will be standing back on about their 15. They're going to break it. He's at the 50. He throws, got a man. Incomplete! Fake punt, little five-yard pass, had a man open. Heard foot 
steps. He did get popped incomplete. First and 10, Cold Spring. Tom? Okay, uh, Bubba, we have with us Reginald Phipps. Like you said, he was hurt in the uh, fourth game of the season, the Crockett game. We'd like to get Reginald's feelings on the ball game. Reginald, how do you feel about the ball game today? I feel that, uh, Everybody can move the attitude. Everybody, uh, execute the Fisher's got him some yards. He gets about nine on that. As we can barely hear down on the field, uh, uh, again, to, uh, Tom, you might put the mic in a little closer. You were talking about having a positive attitude and everybody was right. excited. Uh, I'd like to ask Reginald, uh, I guess it was a big disappointment when you had, went down with an injury and probably be out all the rest of the season. Yeah, when, uh, as soon as I got hurt, one of those uh, trainers from uh, Crockett, he came and he looked at me and uh, he said, you know, that I was going to be out for the season. At first I didn't believe him, but uh, the doctor told me then, and the symptoms. Reginald was a really important part of the uh, football team and he's missed. Thanks a lot, Reginald. All right, thanks, Reginald, and uh, thanks, Tom, again. Uh, hurt during the uh, season, and really hurt his knee bad, and then his wheelchair on the uh, side of the field, saying that uh, this team coming up here had a real positive attitude. They're really pumped for this game, and as some other people have said, they are tight as a rubber band. First and 10 for the Trojans. They are over the midfield line. They're playing right now on the Oilers' helmet in the middle of the field. Flags go down. It looked like Marble Falls was trying to pull them off sides, but uh, we'll have to see who it goes against. So it's going to definitely be an offside penalty. They're going to call it procedure against Cold Spring. Cold Spring moved first. It's going to cost them five. Now it'll be first down and 15. No score yet. Class 3A semifinals. This is the winner of Region 3 and Region 4 playing each other. Next week, it'll determine the state champions. Handoff, option up the middle. Quarterback keeps it, gets about six yards. He's gonna take it over the 45-yard line and move it into Mustang territory. The entire Cold Spring community was rocked on September 21st when head coach Ed Pivato in his third season at the school died in his home of a heart attack. Rather than spending the rest of the season in mourning, the Trojans players and staff adopted the Pivato power, embarking on a 10 and one run after his death, including victories over state ranked Waco Robinson and Belleville. They are fired up. Pitch out to Fisher. He's got about three yards. His feet won't quit. He gets about four or five yards close to the first down. He's going to be shy of the first down by a few yards. Going to bring up third down now. Third down and three. Ball's on the 41-yard line of the Mustangs. Number 82, Leonard McKinney, comes in with the play from the bench. Arthur Reese, the quarterback. With a 35-yard average. Back to pass, rolling around to the right side. Look in, stands, man stand up. Oh, incomplete pass. A little misdirection, I believe. Leonard McKinney turned right. The play in the pass went left. And it laid out in the middle of the field with nobody around it, incomplete. The fans stood to their feet as they saw it looked like it's going to be a long pass. Incomplete, fourth down, and three. They're going for it. The fans starting to stand again. No, they're gonna punt. Punter standing back on his 45. Good snap, plenty of time, short kick. Shanked it off the side of his foot. It's going to hit it at the 30 and go horizontally out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Bad kick. Doesn't give them uh, a whole lot to work with. They're going to be on their own 30-yard line. Starting offense for Marble Falls at quarterback Blank Clett. 
six foot, 175 pound senior. He has 14 TDs, a seven yard average. He's about 46% on his passes. The quarterback, Blaine Clett, number 12. Two in, split ball right and left. In the first quarter, the Trojans get on the scoreboard first. Quarterback Arthur Reese gives to his tailback Ray Fisher, who starts around the right end, then breaking back left. He breaks several tackles to score from 24 yards out. The extra point try was no good, but it was 6-0 Trojans. Signals. 
back, hands off to the second man, Freely's at the 30, got some room, 35, jukes to the 40, down he'll go. Close to the 38, picked up about seven yards it looks like. Slung out of bounds by number 82, Leonard McKinney. Starting defense for the Cold Spring Trojans. At free safety, Charles Parks. At strong safety, Jason Scott. At right corner, Joe Goffney. At left corner, Jack Bradford. At middle linebacker, Mordrick Fisher. I'll give you the others in a moment. Strong side to the right. Everybody is on the right side. I formation. Quarterback, option. First man through, gets it. That's what they call a belly play. Gets about two, three yards. Close to the first down, though. I believe they might have got the first on that one. Where they run an option play, slide it into the belly of the fullback. It is a first down. Slide it into the belly, and the quarterback has the option then and to pull it out and keep it going with the triple option. Running a strong side to the left this time. Going right to left across your radio. Second man through, gets it up the middle. He's got 5, 10, 15, breaks it to the 40-yard line. First and 10. Pick up of 18 yards on that. There's some head banging going on out on the field. They're in Cold Spring territory on the Cold Spring 40. First and 10. Clint, the quarterback. First and ten. Back to pass. No, it's a hand. No, he does keep it. Throws. Complete first down, and down he goes at the 27-yard line. First down, pick up of 12 yards. Marble Falls Mustangs uh, size on offense. Quarterback's 175. Running back's 170. Other running back's 175. Split ends 135, the wide receiver is 160. I'll give you their line in a second. First and 10, Mustangs. And a boom! Hit hard right at the line, doesn't get anywhere. Number 38, Mordrick Fisher. Middle linebacker, and does a great job at middle linebacker. Gets a call from the defensive coach, heads back with the defensive call. Second down and eight from the 25-yard line of the Trojans. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. Old Green Trojans lead six to nothing. Tom, tell me what you think so far of the uh, first quarter. How's it look? Looks real good down here. Uh, every, the defense seems to be playing pretty tough football. Gave up the one big run. But uh, other than that, it looked like they're doing a good job. Tom Brown's on the field and will be uh, checking back and forth with uh, Tom throughout the game. Tom's a new addition to this uh, semifinal broadcast live from the Afterdome. Looking at the uh, offensive line, as I was telling you, the offensive line size uh, at tackle, 6'3", 225, at guard, 5'10", 250, center, 6'3", 200, another guard, 5'10", 200, and a tackle, 6'4", 210. Big on the front line. Everywhere else, they're not real big, but their offensive line is big. Beginning of the third quarter. Second eight from the 25. Quarterback keeps it. He's looking. He's pressured. Down he goes. Number 38, Mordrick Fisher. We'll see the loss on that. It's going to be about five, six yards. We'll see where they mark it. Definitely going to bring up third down. 12 to go on the 29-yard line. Great crowd here. The whole mezzanine level on the home side is full with red and white. We did outnumber Marble Falls, but they got a great crowd too. Quarterback, hands off up the middle, got plenty of room, 20, 10, he's on his feet. Great play. Quarterback was rolling around to his left, handed off, 
He waited a second and then shot up the middle as the quarterback continued his fake around, rolling around the left side and going to pick up a first down. First and 10 from the 10. They can make a first down. The first down would be like on about the one foot line. Strong side left. We're going left to right across your radio. Hand off up the middle. Down about the four yard line. Stop by number 62. Jeff Major. Environmental in Cold Spring and Nagadoches. East Tech Environmental is specialist in providing all kinds of analytical testing and evaluation, as well as consulting services for all of your environmental concerns. In its laboratory division, East Tech Environmental provides analytical evaluations of water, wastewater, soil, and sludges. In its consulting division, East Tech Environmental provides environmental site assessments and management plans. Also, compliance counseling and many other services. For all your environmental testing, service or consulting, municipalities, business, agriculture, or individuals, call East Tex Environmental, 653-3249. In Nacogdoches, 569-8879. 653-3249 in Cold Spring. That's East Tex Environmental. And thanks, Pam and Mac. I'll tell you who Pam and Mac, Mac are a little bit later. Second down and five. The fans stand up. Come on, defense. Marble Falls, pitch out, left side. He's looking for a hole. He's got room. He's going to score a touchdown. Marble Falls scores. A six-yard run off the left side. Good blocking, good play. Look at here. They do the swinging gate, too. Everybody lines up on the left side. The center's over the ball. A man's back, asked like he's going to take the snap. Now everybody comes back over and lines up like a normal play. And they're going to kick it. They do a swinging gate, too. Kicking from the 10, point after. It's down. Ooh, almost blocked. Good rush. It's Flag down, going to be a rough in the kicker. It is good. Number 82, Leonard McKinney, will be called with rough in the kicker. Point after is good. We're still holding at 6-6 until we figure out what the flag is. Rough in the kicker against Cold Spring. Point after's good, seven to six. They'll take it on the kickoff. East Texas LP Gas Company on the corner of Highway 156 and 150 in Cold Spring, serving the propane gas needs, residential, commercial, of the entire Lake Livingston area. Presently, they're offering propane gas at five cent discount on each gallon for first time customers. So it don't matter what county you're listening in, call Danny and see if he can help you. I bet he can. The Cleveland number is 713-592-4950. 713-592-4950. In Cold Spring, at 653-3080. 653-3080. For all your service needs, propane gas, be sure to contact Danny Lamb and his winning team at East Texas LP Gas Company. Give them a call at 653-3080. If it has to do with propane gas, Danny can do it. No matter if it's a little bitty bottle for your cook stove or whether it's something for the deer camp or a big propane tank, he can take care of all your gas needs, senior citizen discount, and five cents off a gallon for this special introductory offer. So go by and talk to Danny. He's there right now. 
listening to the game. Wish you were there, Danny. Ball's on the 45-yard line, taking that penalty of roughing the kicker. Kicking from the 45, Cole Spring standing back to the deepest man on about the 10. We're going left to right across your radio. And the kick, low and straight down the middle. It's going to hit one bounce, taking it to 10. Looking for his blockers. He's at the 15, jukes to the 20, still on his feet. Down he goes at about the 18-yard line. That was the quarterback, Arthur Reese, back deep and carrying the ball. Cold Spring lining up. Uh, Cold Spring lining up in a swinging gate on first and, and ten. Pitch back up the middle. Reese gets about four yards and down he goes. It hit a swinging gate on first and ten. That's where the ball will be on the right side and uh, all the the linemen and the ends are all side by side standing up on the left side. And the man who is centering the ball doesn't center it between his legs. He just shuffles it back to the quarterback. This time it's shuffled back to Reese. He then falls in behind all of his blockers, and he's able to pick up five yards. Second and five, ball on the 24-yard line of the Trojans. Strong side right, Parks and Fisher in the backfield. Reese at quarterback. That's Parks in motion this way. Pitch out to Reese. He's looking. Pitch out, excuse me, to Fisher. Picks up four, maybe. Maybe. Cold Spring Trojans are the winner of 19-3A. They run the triple option, the wide beer. They got two seniors in the backfield, a sophomore quarterback. They won the area playoffs against Waco Robinson, 49-6. Waco Robinson was ranked third in the state when they beat him that bad. Up the middle to Fisher, churning those legs as hard as he can, and I don't believe he's going to get the first down. The defense is not all that big for Marble Falls. 258, 180, 206, 220, 205, 148. The backs are 143, 150, 163. They're going to measure. It's going to be close. They string it, put it down, and first down. First and 10 Trojans. Still a long way to go. Like 71 yards. First and 10. Ball on the 29. 8.51 left to go in the first quarter. First half. We're in the second quarter. Parks in motion this way. Fisher gets it. Turning for about two yards, three yards up the middle. Gold Spring yet to put the ball in the air. They do run a lot. They do have two good receivers on the flanker. Two good wide receivers. Two young tight ends come off the JV. Cold Spring, one district in 193A. Shepherd came in second place. Elsewhere in 193A, it was Trinity, Splendor, Madisonville, and Montgomery rounding out 193A. Option played. Fisher gets about two and he stopped. Most of the plays so far have been running plays. Fairly much right up the middle, running that uh, triple option. One man fall right, Parks Fisher in the backfield. It's third down and four. Fumble, ball's loses. Going back to about the 15, ball still is picked up. He's got it, he's on his feet, he's at the 10, the five, he's pushing his way in. Got their hands on it. Marble Falls ends up taking it into the end zone. 
Cole Springside is silent. The point after. The kicker puts the tee down on about the 10. He acts like he's going to take a snap. They're in the swinging gate. Now they're coming back for the point after in a regular formation. Holder goes down, looking for the snap. The one point after attempt. It's down, it's up, it's good. It's 14 to six. The Mustangs over the Trojans. 7.20 left to go in the second half. Tom, it's mighty somber on the uh, Cold Spring side right now. Uh, not as bad as you'd think, Bubba. Uh, the kids still seem real up. Uh, it's kind of cool their temperature down a little bit, but they're still up. Now, th this team, do, do they rely on emotion a whole lot, or do they go up and down, or do they keep a, a steady go after it? Uh, from what I've seen on these kids, it, it's pretty much uh, just a steady attitude toward the whole thing. I see um, Fisher there on the sidelines. Do you think that he's being run a lot? Uh, probably not any more than uh, in an ordinary game. He's got some ice on his neck. I think he's just cooling down a little bit. Waiting for the kickoff. Marble Falls will be kicking off from left to right. They're in gold pants, white jerseys, purple numbers, and gold helmets. They'll be kicking from left to right. Gold spring, all red, white numbers, white helmets. Deepest men standing back on about the 10, 15 yard line. 720 left to go in the first half. It's 14 to 6. Marble Falls. Kick straight down the middle of the field. One high bounce at the 10. Up the middle of the field to the 15. 20, 25, 30. He's gonna break. Right to left. 
14 to 12. Cold Spring trails by two. They have missed both of their extra point attempts. One on the first one, the point after going for one was no good, and he just barely missed getting the two just a moment ago. They'll make it up. Good kick into the end zone. He'll down it. Woo! That's fun into that, didn't you, Junior? Kick that ball all the way into the end zone, and they'll down it. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. First and 10, Marble Falls on their 20, going left to right in gold and white against the fighting red T-Dogs, Cold Spring. Strong side left, quarterback looking, throws over the middle, got him and complete. He's at the 40, close to midfield, down about the 44-yard line. A little slant in from the left side of a 12-yard pass complete. He was wide open. Going to have to do a, a little uh, altering, stunning, loosening up of the defensive backs, move them around a little bit. This team does like to throw, and they can run. Their offensive line is big. And off, up the middle, uh -uh, about two, three yards, and that's it. Number 62 is the last one to get off the bottom of the pile. Jeff Major, along with number 70, Jarrett Turner. The quarterback throws good. He has speed. He executes the triple veer very well, and that's what they, that's their bread and butter, the triple veer. They'll play a split in, and then they throw it to him some. So on third and long, they may take the quarterback, put him on split in, and throw to him. Reverse around the right side. Crowd stands up. He doesn't have anything yet. Gets about three yards, maybe. Running a reverse. The crowd saw it. They stood up, and he maybe just got a few yards and nothing else. We'll see where they mark it. It looks like it's going to be uh, maybe a yard pickup at the most. Third and nine. Ball on the 44-yard line. 6.07 to play in the first half. Quarterback rolling around the left side, looking to throw. Got a man incomplete. A little over his head. He didn't tip it. Intended receiver was number 12, Blaine Clett. See, just then they had third and long. They took Clett, put him at split in, and threw to him. He can catch, too. And at that point, overthrown just a little. He's tall, too, six foot. 175-pound seat, good quarterback. Fourth down. Good kick. Back to about the 20s. Pedals to the 15. Looking, down he goes at the 20. 21, 22-yard line. First down. Good kick. Marble Falls. Punts it away. First and ten. And off up the middle, picks up about two yards. Second down and four. Second down and four from the 28. Hand off up the middle. Picks up about three yards.
They're going to come out and measure. Going to be closed out. We're going to be going to be short just a little.
to uh, the Astrodome. We did have uh, apparently a phone line that uh, went dead here. We want to give you an update as quick as we can. For you on TV, you, you have it all. But on radio, we'll try to make it up for you and tell you what has been going on in the first half. Right now, Marble Falls has the ball on the 20-yard line. Looking to run, it got about four or five, makes a little juke and gets down about four yards. He does get the first down, close to the 10-yard line. We are in the second quarter. It is 14 to 12, Marble Falls. Cold Spring scored, the point after was blocked. They scored again, Arthur Reese ran back a kickoff for 80 yards and the point after going for two was no good. Marble Falls has scored twice and the one point after attempt after each touchdown was good. 14 to 12, the Mustangs are ahead of the Trojans. It is a packed house over here. We have uh, about a thousand from San Jacinto County, they and Polk and surrounding counties that are here. We have probably uh, the lower mezzanine on the home side full. Marble Falls on the uh, far side. Their colors are gold, purple, and white. We have a timeout on the field right now. 14 to 12, Marble Falls over the Trojans. We are live from the Houston Astrodome. It is Marble Falls ball with a timeout. They have gold pants, white shirts, purple numbers, gold helmets. Cold Spring, red, solid red uniforms, white numbers, white helmets. Tom Brown is on the field. We'll be doing some interviews on and off uh, with him in just a few moments as they go to the locker room. First and 10. They can get a first down. It'll be around the three-yard line. The quarterback, Brian Fett, rolling around the left side. He keeps it, ducks his head, gets down to about the six-yard line, and out of bounds he goes. Pick up maybe four or five yards. Blaine Clint, six foot, 175-pound senior. Throws good, runs good, executes the triple veer option well. As we saw a minute ago, the quarterback can also go to split in and catch a ball. Strong side to the right, two split ends, eye formation. Option play, takes it. Down he goes at the 10. Running the uh, triple veer where he can give it to the first man through, slide it out of his belly if he wants, either turn it up and run it, or pitch it back to the halfback. Then he was tackled from behind, a loss of four. Third down and eight from the 10-yard line. One sixteen left to go in the first half. And at about uh, 50 seconds from now, we'll be uh, checking in with Tom Brown, who's on the field, and hopefully we'll get a hold of Coach Roger uh, Henry as he is walking off the field and uh, get his views on how the first half has been. We'll be checking in with, uh, with Tom in just a few moments. Tom, what do you think so far of the first half? How's it been going? Well, the first half is, uh may have been a little tougher than some people anticipated it would be, but I think the kids are playing pretty good football right now, and they're still up on the sideline. All the players standing along the sideline here are really encouraging the ones on the field, so I think it still looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll be checking back with you in just a few moments. Uh, you can grab some players and maybe grab some coaches, uh, Coach Henry, on the way out, and uh, we'll be talking to them in just a few moments. Do, does the... Uh, the, the missing of the points after, uh, what do you think that's done to them, or what are they saying? Well, uh, it seems like the whole season, uh, Cold Spring kind of been erratic on extra points, so 
lot of times they hadn't had to depend on those to win a football game. Uh, of course, any time you miss them, I think it hurts you. But uh, we've got to score again to get ahead of them anyway. So, you know, right now I don't think they're really playing a big part in the game. Fourth down and about four yards for a first down. They can get a first. It'll be uh, down about the uh, three-yard line. Thirty-eight seconds left to go in the first half. The crowd stands up, chanting for the defense. Fourth and six on the eight. Quarterback rolling out the right side, looking, throws, got a man. Complete on the one-foot line. Number 29. Josh Goffney. We got a report that Carroll is leading Gainesville right now, six to three. Timeout, Marble Falls. They do have a chance to score. One foot line, first and goal. Timeout. It's 14 to 12 right now. Again, uh, Marble Falls scoring and making their point afters. Gold Spring scored twice. One on a 90 yard run back from Arthur Reese. One of the uh, kicks actually wasn't blocked. It just wasn't going to go through, hit a player, bounced up, and, of course, no good. Then on the second, after Ree scored from the 10-yard line on a kickoff return, they went for two and just barely missed that. First down from the one-foot line. Both sides stand up. Everybody in tight. Hand off up the middle. Touchdown. <laughs> the uh, crowd on the far side, uh, all you really see is gold, white, and purple. I think purple on them is their numbers. Going for the point after, up to 10. Going for one point, the kick, it's up. He's three for three on PAT. Score now is 21 to 12. 29 seconds left to go in the first half. Crowd sponsor, the Cold Spring Trojans. They're on FM 224, about eight miles north of Cold Spring, or about seven miles from Highway 156. They're the only full-service marina open to the public on the west side of Lake Livingston. The cafe has some new hours. They're open 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Wednesday through Sunday. Serving breakfast all day. They also have lunch and dinner, featuring Mary's home-baked sourdough cinnamon rolls, buns, and dinner rolls. Some of the best cheeseburgers I've ever had and uh, Royce makes mean catfish. Don't forget on their Thursday night specials, they have all the catfish you can eat every Thursday night for $6.95, and that's catfish and all the trimmings. And it is delicious. We did have a group out there once before. And if you want to take groups out, uh, they have spaces for you to take groups, and they have some beautiful A-frame waterfront cabins. Call them at 377-2696. Kicking from the 40, laid the ball down on its end. It bounces, takes a high bounce to Reese at the 10. He's at the 15, the 20 up the middle. Got some room at the 30, down to the 35-yard line. Reese almost breaking it, bringing the crowd to their feet on and off throughout this entire game so far. 21 to 12. 
for you on radio. We apologize for the uh, first quarter where we had a, uh, a telephone line apparently disconnected somewhere here in the Astrodome beyond our control. First and ten, Cold Spring. Hand off to Fisher. He can't find room, but he don't give up. Maybe gets two. Couldn't get away from one, but he kept his feet. Picked up uh, two yards, second down and eight from the 38-yard line. Starting offense for the Trojans is quarterback Reese, running backs Fisher and Parks, wide receiver McKinney, tight ends are Benestani and Reed. The line is Spiller, Robinson, Botard, Blankenmeyer, Queen. Timeout called by Cole Spring with 12 seconds left to go in the first half. They trail it 21 to 12. We'll be talking to coaches and players here in just a few moments with Tom Brown on the field. Also uh, joining me here in the booth at the Astrodome is Janice Pivato. We'll be talking with her in just a few moments. Timeout on the field. Great crowd here. I don't know if there's anybody at uh, Christmas on the square, because there is a slew of people here. Whenever we get home, we're going to be bringing a lot of people with us. This team does not get down. They don't get disheartened in any way. And at halftime, they usually don't give them pep talks. Those guys know that they can be the best. Just do it. Second down, eight. Hand off up the middle to Fisher. He gets about three yards. Down he goes. Timeout call. Another proud sponsor of the Cold Spring Trojans is McMurray Insurance Agency. They're your independent insurance agency. McMurray is not obligated to just one insurance company. They can search around at all the different companies and just find that one that's just right and put it together for the coverage that you need to your exact needs and at the best price. For any and all types of insurance needs, whether it's life, health, homeowners, renters, mobile homes, auto, trucking, boat, or business, be sure to speak first with McMurray Insurance Agency. And they have a specialist coverage. You know all these exotic birds that are around East Texas and everywhere? They'll insure exotic birds. And they have specialty coverage. All you got to do is call Frank McMurray at McMurray Insurance Agency, 653-2358. 653-2358. Third down and four from the 42-yard line. Eight seconds left. The stands are now standing up. It's a throw to Fisher at the 50, 45, 40. Down he goes at the 43-yard line. Time's run out. Check in on the field. We have Tom Brown roaming around on the field as the first half ends. 21 to 12. Marble Falls. Tom? Uh, yes. We got Coach Henry here with us, and he said he's in quite a hurry, but how about the first half so far? Well, we're, we're getting a buzz beat right now. Well, we're going to come back in the second half, all right? Yeah. Also, Joining me up here in the uh, press box is Janice Pivato. Hi, Hi, Janice. There you go. That's yours. Thanks. Well, uh, I imagine that that whole town is is just going crazy over this team, huh? Yes, we are. We think they're wonderful. Tell me a little bit about uh, the spirit of this team. I know that uh, that you were close to this team for for quite a long time. Tell me about the boys. For everybody that's listening that don't really know the Cold Spring Trojans individually, who these, are they? These are the finest young men you'll ever meet. They are wonderful, every last one of those kids. Ray Fisher's the leader, Don Aldridge, Jarrett Turner, Kevin Reed, Leonard McKinney, those are the guys you hear about. But all of them, 
right down to Jerry Monroe, who's a JV and just getting to be here. But he's going to be a great player because he's got such a big heart. All these kids are going to be somebody, and they already are, but in adult life. That's true. In adult life because they're good kids, and they've got great heart, and they've been taught to do right. Now, I understand that, that they are a, a family team. They, they yeah. really do work together as a team. They don't get on each other's back or holler no, they yell don't. at each other. They, they're a team. No, they don't yell. They don't scream at each other. The only time they yell and scream at each other is when they're cheering for each other. They're, they are a team, and they play like a team. That's why we can come back, and, you know, 12 to 21 is no problem. Well, what, what I uh, don't really know about this team is how they act emotionally. With, with high school kids, sometimes when they get down or they're behind or something, you know, they kind of drag around their emotions or down, they play that way. Tell me how this team plays emotionally like that. This team was taught to play no matter what. You don't hang your head and you don't worry about what you can't control. You just control what you can. And that's what these guys do. Now, your husband passed away, I think it was like the third game of the season. After uh, the third game. After the third game, uh, Coach uh, Ed Pivato. And at that point, what do you think it did to the players? I remember uh, at the uh, funeral service in the field that the boys, the players, would not leave until the casket and Coach Pivato left the field. They wouldn't leave him. They, they wanted right. to stay with him. What has that done to the kids? Well... Coach Pivato gave him a talk on Friday night after the Jeff Davis game and a talk on Saturday morning about doing right, sticking with their goals, playing as a team, regardless of what happened to him. It was almost as if he had a premonition. And these kids came to me and they said, Miss Pivato, we want you at every game, just like Coach was there, because as far as we're concerned, he is here and we're going to play like he's here. And that's what they've done. And I believe, actually, by listening to some of the kids, they believe he's here and watching. Oh, yeah. Oh, they do. They, they just feel like he's in, in the ultimate blimp. <laughs> sending down plays. <laughs> sending down plays from the ultimate blimp. <laughs> Write that down, everybody. And understand, I hear your dog. First, I was sitting there at the ball games, and I've been calling the games, and I hear this dog. <laughs> and I said, what? Where is this dog? And somebody pointed at and said, well, there's that dog right there. That's Pivato's dog. So the dog goes to all the games. Yes, he's not here today because I'm chairman of Christmas Old Squire. <laughs> And I was so late leaving Cold Spring, I didn't have time to slip by the house and get him. Yeah. The guys are mad at me, I'm sure. Now, I always wondered how I was going to handle being in two places at once, being at the Dome and being at Cold Spring. Now I'm with the chairman, the chairman who runs Christmas on the Square at the Dome. I feel safe now. Well, I told Alan Gores and Dick Hoffman, Cecil Faircloth, all those guys, when they asked me to to help them out, I said, I will, but you need to understand, if if we're playing on Saturday, I won't be there. <laughs> and, and, you know, they looked at me kind of funny. They said, we're not going to be playing football in December. And I said, this team's going to be playing football in December. Yep, that's right. And until <laughs> yeah. December 19th. That's right. Now, uh, when Coach Pimento started this do-right, what, what, what is do right. Tell me a little bit about that. Do right is the philosophy for life. You do right every day, in every instant, and then on Friday night, the game takes care of itself. If, if you take care of your business in school, at home, in church, with your family, then the football team is going to make it because you're going to do right all the time. It becomes a habit and a way of life. And I guess it's, it's uh, not too hard to understand the pivotal power. What's behind that? The ultimate blimp in the sky. The ultimate blimp. <laughs> Sending down plays. That's right. I believe it. Now, uh, th this team seems to be the closest knit team, uh, the most highly spirited bunch of young men that I have ever seen. They are. Without a doubt, these guys are the greatest bunch of guys you're ever going to meet. In, in a joint venture, these are 49 of the best people you'll ever know in your life. Well, Ms. Pivato, thanks for stopping up. we got a booth over here if you want to sit here, but I would imagine it's a I've lot more get fun right here. down there. i got to get right back down to the 50-yard line. I figured you did. <laughs> Janice, thanks right. for stopping in. Janice Pivato, who is uh, the uh, 
late wife of uh, the late Ed Pivato. Passed away uh, right after the third game of the season. I'm Bubba Haley, and we are live from the Houston Astrodome. It is a, a beautiful crowd here. We got uh, all the mezzanine level that is, is full, basically on both sides. Uh, we'll have special guests coming up here to the press box. Uh, we are listening in the background now to uh, a number that I could probably count. It looks like uh, <laughs> maybe there's 20, 25 band members for Marble Falls. They uh, are in purple with white helmets, a little gold plume. And their drill team of uh, about eight is right next to them. Cold Spring coming on the field in, in just a few moments. We are at halftime in the Houston Astrodome. I'm Bubba Haley, live on KETX 92.3 FM. It's 21 to 12. And as Janice Pivato just pointed out, it is nothing for this team to come back from a 21 to 12 deficit. The Cold Spring Trojans, 13 and one. Their only defeat coming uh, from Greatland are the winner of 19-3A. Their principal is Jim Marsh. Head coach is Roger Henry. The band coming up in just a few moments. They're sitting on the uh, side of the field. It is uh, Director Royce Creek of the Trojan Regiment. Some partial scores going on in Class 5A. Euless Trinity Trojans are trailing the Converse Judson Rockets 24 to nothing. And also in 4A, Waxahachie Indians are leading Lubbock Escado Matadors in the first quarter 7 to nothing. So at the half, in 5A play, Converse Judson shutting out Eunice Trinity 24 to nothing. And in class 4A, Waxahachie is shutting out Lubbock Escado in the first quarter, seven to nothing. Thank you. The drill team, directed by Linda Curry, the Trojanettes will Come on the field in just a few moments. We're at halftime. In the background, uh, leaving the field now is Marble Falls Band. Be talking in just a few moments with uh, some members of the Cold Spring Booster Club. And I don't know where uh, where my buddy Tom is. He uh, might have went in the uh, dressing room. We'll uh, be talking with uh, Tom Brown in just a few moments as uh, I believe he's in the locker room listening to uh, the coaches uh, talk to the players, get an overall feel of uh, how the uh, team is feeling and what was said in the locker room on the first half as the Trojans uh, definitely uh, in this game and not out of it. It's been a seesaw back and forth and actually uh, two turnovers have caused two of the touchdowns for the Marble Fall Mustangs. We'll also be going up into the stands and uh, talking to uh, some of the fans that are here. Coming out on the field right now is the 1991-92 Trojan Regiment directed by Royce Creek. Black pants, white jackets with a red C on the back of it. Joining me in the uh, press box from the Dome is from the Cold Spring Booster Club, Gary and Brenda Elliott. How do you think of this game so far? Gary? Well, it's, uh, I think it's pretty close. Uh, the score might not show it right now, but I, th I think we've got a good chance of coming back and uh, doing real well. Like you say, it's been a seesaw battle, but uh, I feel like it's just not anything we had not already been through, so we're looking to come back. Well, what are the fans saying? Being down there, I guess you're on oh, the yes, what, what are they saying? Uh, you want to tell them? They're saying we did it last week. We can do it again. 
So the fans don't even give up. No, oh, no fans, we're not giving up. No. We can't uh -huh. quit. No. We're too close to the end. We can't quit. Yeah, yeah. only one more game after That's this. It. Can't quit yeah. now. No, sir. Tell me, we're going to talk more about the game in a little bit. But tell me about the Booster Club. What are some things that uh, the Booster Club in Cold Spring do? Well, uh, Judy Monroe and the Mr. and Miss Morkish are all just into it 100%. They have work. We've sold hats. They've sold pins. We have uh, done gave away videotapes of all of Coach Pivato's items. We are really, really behind the team, and those two, um, Mr. and Miss Monroe and, and the Boers, have just went all out. They've done everything that we could possibly do to keep Spirit going, and which is not a hard thing to do now, but they really are 100% for the boys. And when the boys are down, they fix cakes. When they're sick, they take them to the doctor. It doesn't matter. We're there for them. Now, I talked to Janice uh, a little bit about the boys and, mm -hmm. and being both of y'all been around them. Tell me what your feelings are about the, the Trojan team as individuals and well, people. Well, I have a daughter that's a cheerleader, and she's been uh, cheering now two years with them. And the boys have been in and out of our home, and I think they're the swellest boys I've ever met in my life. When those boys lose or when they win, they walk away and they have a heart. They have a heart. When they're playing to win, or, or no matter what they do, they'll reach down and pick their opponents up and, and help them and pat them on the back. And after the game's over and we all go out to eat, they never say, we did it. They never say, we beat them. They're always just happy and the most sweetest bunch of boys I've ever seen in my life. And when you meet them on the street, they won't hardly talk about the losses or the wins. They just want to go on and play some more ball. Hmm. What, what do you think? Oh, I think I agree with my wife. And uh, when you meet these guys, uh, we, we I, I've made, fifth, this is the 15th straight game I've made, and every game is the same. Uh, when you, like she said, when you meet them, they're the same, they don't change. They're not boastful, they're not, uh, they're not braggarts or anything like that, but uh, when they play, they play, you know, they play to win. I mean, that's what they're here for, but they play, you know, with all their heart, and, uh, and we love them. And they're, they're just a nice bunch of boys you'd ever want to meet. Do you, do you think this is because of the discipline uh, that that Pivato has put in them? Yes, sir. Definitely, discipline is uh, that's 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 what he believed and that's what he fought for and that's uh, that's what these boys are that's what they're all about is discipline. You, you you can see it when they play. You can see it on the street. Anywhere they go, they're they're, they're disciplined boys. Yeah. We love them. Well, uh, Janice Pivato was just here and she says that. Uh, Ed is sending down plays from the ultimate blimp right now. We believe that. We, we do believe, believe it. We Don't believe. you? <laughs> I, I believe I have chill bump. I yes, tell you, sir. I believe it. I believe he's watching us right now. I believe it. Yes, and, sir. Uh, it's just it's just so sad that he couldn't be here to just share this because this, like Janice said, we believe he had a premonition. We believe that he knew that this was the team that was going to be put together. Whether it be that we would be here live in the Astrodome, he might not have envisioned that. But I believe that he knew that this was the team that could put it together and do something. Yes, sir. If ever there was one, this is it right here. I believe it. Well, uh, thanks for stopping Thank up. Thank you very much. Having we you. appreciate it. Thanks again. Yes, sir. Go get them. All right. That's uh, Brenda and uh, Gary Elliott. They are with the uh, Cold Spring Booster Club. We'll be uh, talking to uh, more people throughout uh, throughout uh, the ball game. I think we've got Dr. Larry Bennett to uh, be here in just a few moments. I have down on the uh, field right now, Tom Brown. Tom? Yes, uh, well, I've just have been in the dressing room with the team. Uh, they're right now, they're just kind of taking a little quiet time and talking amongst themselves. The coaches are in a meeting of their own. I think the players know what they have to do. They don't seem real down about uh, the first half. And uh, they've got uh, Von Cross, a player that played for Cold Spring uh, for the last couple of years, graduated last year, uh, playing ball for Prairie View, was up with the team. And a couple of Coach Pivotow's sons were up there talking with the team. And like I say, I think they know what they have to do the second half. I don't think they're really all that down. Well, we know that the coaches are uh, in, in talking right now amongst themselves over strategic plans and plays and what to do different or what they've done right. What about the players? Is it quiet in there? What are they saying amongst themselves? The uh, players always have a quiet time when they first come into the uh, dressing room at halftime. The coaches have a meeting, and the players don't really do anything except sit around and rest and have some refreshment, talk among themselves. Mainly what they're talking about right now is that they can come back on this bunch, that they're a better ball team than Marble Falls is, and they are. They're, we're a lot quicker. Uh, so far, all the breaks here looks like it went Marble Falls' way, and they've capitalized on them. What, what about turnovers? They, a, a couple of them that have resulted in touchdowns, uh, uh, do you 
think that um, they can do anything to correct maybe a, a couple of the little foolish mistakes that are made here and there? On the turnovers, uh, of course, the one fumble recovery that they ran back for a touchdown hurt them bad. Uh, I think probably the um, turnovers are just going to happen sometime, and you just have to play and overcome them. Uh, right now, I think the main concern of the coaching staff is that uh, at halftime, we've only got three or four first downs and 88 yards total offense before the last run by a last pass to Ray Fisher. So our offense is just not generating any yardage right now. Okay, give me those stats once again. I believe we have, it's either three or four first downs, four first downs, and I think it was 88 yards total offense until the last play of the first half, and I'm not sure what Ray got on that play. Okay, 88 yards total offense for uh, for Cold Spring. They normally get up in the range of 300, so they're not running the ball as well, huh? No, they're not. Uh, of course, like I say, with the last play to uh, Ray Fisher, it probably gets their uh, total yardage up over 120 or so, or, I'm not sure how much you had on that last play. Well, uh, what about Fisher? They, they, are they going to him as much? They just don't seem like that they're going to Fisher quite as much. Why do you think that is? It doesn't seem that uh, Ray's run the ball as much as he has in the in past ball games. But I'll tell you, we haven't had the ball as much as we have in the last, you know, past ball games. Yeah, they're having to play more defense than we're having to play more offense. Absolutely. When we uh, talked to. Uh, uh, Coach uh, Henry, did you pick us up or did we break up on that? No, I, I, I got you. Okay. I got you talking to him. Um, we, uh, I believe right before they come out, which will probably be in about two or three minutes, we'll uh, see if you can maybe grab Coach Monahan or uh, one of the other coaches real quick, get a word with them on what all went in the, in the uh, locker room. And you can walk this way uh, back to the uh, sidelines. We'd also like to maybe get some interviews uh, uh, from the field here. Uh, with some people also uh, up in the stands. So maybe right before we start, just jump up in the stand, go around, and uh, let, let's see what some of the fan reaction is and, and uh, talk to a lot more people here in the second half. Okay, will do. Okay, thanks, Tom. You bet. Tom Brown is on the uh, field for us, and uh, right now he's headed back uh, towards the locker room, and uh, we'll get an update from him in just a few moments. We are at halftime from the Dome. This is KETX 92.3 FM. About uh, three minutes now. Right now in the background is the... Cold Spring Trojan Regiment Band with the director Royce Creech. Roger Henry uh, said that a strong mental outlook has enabled the Trojans to overcome the uh, Pivoteau tragedy. As we said earlier and talked to uh, Janice Pivoteau, head coach Ed Pivoteau, passed away, died of a heart attack at his home on September the 21st. Henry said it's maturity and the fact that they're disciplined. He said that's a tribute to Coach Pivoteau. He ran a disciplined program and that's something that Coach Henry said he wants to continue. He says they enjoy being with each other. There's a lot of unity on the team. It's a family type atmosphere and they're just great kids to be around. There's also strength on the field. Cold Spring features an offense led by six foot one, 195 pound tailback Ray Fisher, who has rushed for 2,504 yards and 32 touchdowns. Despite inexperience entering the season, sophomore quarterback Arthur Reese has added 1,000 yards rushing he directed an attack averaging nearly 300 yards a game. Ray, uh, a great high school running back, will probably go on to play a major college football. He has good speed, very powerful runner. He runs as hard as I think I've ever seen anybody run, and he just keeps those legs churning for that extra effort and that extra yardage. It's the defense which Cole Spring needs to stop a Marble Falls attack led by quarterback Blaine Clett. 1,917 all-purpose yards 
1,917 yards. Lineman Don Aldridge and linebackers Daryl Mims and Broderick Fisher lead a Trojans unit that's allowing an average of 11 points a game. Coach Henry says we've got a lot of leaders defensively. We don't have size, but we're quick, and we play a pursuit game. That's what you have. Marble Falls runs out of the I formation. They come in with the lead, and then sprint draws. They throw quite a bit. They'll play the option real well. And um, basically, they have a big offensive line. Their offensive line is probably the biggest that's on the field. Give you some idea of their offensive line. 212, 235, 214, 258, 207 pounds, 220, 205. Most, if not all, there's a 194. Most, if not all, of their offensive line are in the 200-pound range. A big offense. The quarterback, Blaine Blett, Clett, is six foot, 175-pound senior. He has 14 touchdowns himself. He averages about seven yards. He's about 46% uh, passer. He has 1,323 yards and seven interceptions. Giving you some uh, score updates in the second quarter. Waxahachie is still shutting out Lubbock Escato 14 to nothing. Judson still shutting out Euless Trinity at halftime 21 to nothing. We'll continue to keep you up to date with those. Cold Spring Trojans are the 19-3A district champions. Their offense led by quarterback Arthur Reeves. In the backfield, Fisher and Parks. Fisher, net yards rushing over the season, 2,583. He averages 9.2 yards per carry. Fisher has 32 touchdowns, and his longest run is 85 yards. The longest run of the season is 96 yards in the center game by Roderick Parks. A 90-yard run back in this game was given to Arthur Reese as he ran it back for one of the Cold Spring touchdowns today. Some of the opponents that Cold Spring has played, Port Arthur Austin, Woodville, Jeff Davis, Crockett, Grapeland, Trinity, Shepherd, Splendora, Madisonville, Montgomery, Center, Waco Robinson, Columbus, Belleville. They won all of those games, but Grapeland, they lost that one 27 to 30. Their season record to that State, nine and one. Looking at uh, some composite statistics, the Trojans on first downs have 265, their opponents 167. Yards rushing, the Trojans have 4,242, their opponents were allowed 1,664. In the air, Cold Springs 694. Their opponents, 1,534 yards. The cheer you're fixing to hear is from the far side. The fans dressed up in purple, gold, and white, standing up cheering, filling up the lower mezzanine level as the Marble Falls Mustangs in gold pants, white jerseys, gold helmets, purple numbers, come out, gather under the goal post, and fix to come out onto the field. Way in the third quarter. This is Class 3A semifinals. This is the winner of Region 3, Cold Spring, playing the winner of Region 4, Marble Falls, in the semifinals. We're live from the Houston Astrodome. Now, also playing is the winner of Region 1, Carroll, playing the winner of Region 2, Gainesville. They are playing and the winner of that game will play in the final Class 3A championship game December the 19th. We don't know where it is, but here comes the Cold Spring Trojans, and I'm not going to be able to talk over the list, this crowd here.
cold spring, pick to win this game. Here is uh, Tom Brown's down on the field. Tom? Yes, I got Coach Pat Monahan with me. Uh, Pat, what do you think so far? Well, I think they're a good ball club. I think they've been doing a few things on defense to hurt us, and we've made some adjustments at halftime, try to shore up our blocking a little bit better. Uh, our defense is over pursuing just a little bit, but we're going to try to hold that down, too. We're, we're all keyed up, and we're all fired up to play a good second half. We hope we never let the people coach bring down. Thank you, Pat, for taking time. Appreciate it. Okay, that's uh, Coach Pat Monahan uh, talking with uh, Tom Brown. Tom, uh, you, you were in the locker room. Uh, again, go over the feeling of, of the locker room. What did you think? Well, the coaches, uh, you know, they're pretty much just uh, business as usual. They don't get too excited. They uh, told the team that, uh, like I told you before, we're probably a better ball club than this bunch is. We've been making mis some mistakes on offense, and uh, they said we were over-pursuing on defense, which is allowing them to have some big gains on us, and they've made some adjustments, and uh, they think it's going to work for them. Okay, thanks. Tom, uh, get as many interviews as you can. I'll try to keep a better eye on you down there on the field, and uh, let's talk to some of these cheerleaders and some of the fans and as many people as we can on the sidelines. Thanks, Tom. Uh, thank you. That is uh, Tom Brown, who is uh, broadcasting live from the field. And uh, sometimes if you hear a lot of crowd noise, that'll be because Tom has uh, got, got a wireless mic out on the field, and uh, you might get a little loud. Also, uh, Tom, I believe you can still hear me when you see them huddle up over here on the sidelines. Maybe stick that mic in there, and let's hear what some of the action is. We are kicking off and going into the third quarter now. Marble Falls with the ball at the 30, down to the 34, and that's about it. Marble Falls will take the ball. First down and 10 from the 35-yard line. Just underway in the third quarter. I'm Bubba Haley, live from the Houston Astrodome with the Class 3A semifinals. Marble Falls Mustangs, the winner of Region 4, playing the Cold Spring Trojans, the winner of Region 3. The winner of this game go on and play in the state finals next week. First and 10. Running out of an eye formation, Marble Falls running the triple veer real well. There's the option, slides it into the belly of the fullback. He gets a yard, and that's off. They do run that option play. They ex the quarterback executes that real well, sliding into the belly of the fullback, then deciding whether he is going to keep it and continue with the option play. Blaine Clett, six foot, 175 feet, senior, 75 pound senior, rolls out to the right side looking. There's a man open right there, throws to him, almost intercepted by Arthur Reese. Incomplete pass. The end running out at about uh, 25 yards. It had been a nice uh, completion, but it wasn't anywhere close. Looked like a little misdirection there. Going to bring up now third down and nine from the 36-yard line. Ends are split. High formation. Hands off. No, he keeps it. Look at He's trouble down. He goes. Fumble. Falls down. Big pile up. Everybody's on their feet. Cole Spring's got it. Cole Spring recovers the football. That's Jack Bradford and Daryl Mims. They were the last two. I believe it was uh, one of those guys. There's Don Aldridge. Don was up there last. Could have been one of those that recovered the fumble for Cole Spring. Nice turnover. Cole Spring will have the ball first and 10 on the 35-yard line. Just underway in the third quarter, Cole Spring trails 21 to 12 in Class 3A semifinals. Next week is the final game. One more after this and that will be the state champion. The mezzanine level, the red section, lower level of the Astrodome is full, and then they're scattered from there on up. I'd say there's over a 1,000 people here on this side of the field. Fisher up the middle. He gets about six. That's Parks, Roderick Parks. Second down and one from the 
25. The quarterback, Reese, keeps it, gets the first, plus four. Touchdown is on its way. First down and seven from the seven. First and goal, man in motion coming this way. Handoff. Fisher touchdown! Touchdown, Cole Spray! The fans are going wild. Arthur Reese hands off to Fisher up the middle. It's good for six. It was 21-12 Marble Falls at the half, but here come the Trojans in the third quarter. It's Reese giving the Fisher one more time up the middle to cap a scoring drive. And seven yards out, it's a 21-18 contest. Point after Tim. No good, off to the left. It's 21 to 18. Joining me here up in the booth at the Astrodome is uh, the criminal district attorney for uh, San Jacinto County, Robert Hill Trav. Robert, what do you think? Oh, it's great. We're coming back. We're coming back. Tell me what, what some of the, the people in the stands are saying. What, what are y'all talking about down there? Well, they're hoping they can cut down the turnovers on our team. They, the fumble really killed us in the first half, and uh, but they're looking forward to a great second half and coming back on them. Now, tell me a little bit about what you know of this team. Well, well, them personally. Give a little scouting report about this team. What do you think about it? Oh, the Trojans are great. They're great. Uh, been watching all their games all year. They're real strong in the second half. A great running game and, and a lot of speed all the way around. Now, uh, what about the pivotal power they have? Tell me a little bit about how, how they're just so fired up emotionally about this. Well, he's a great inspiration to the team. He 
taught them to do right, and, and they just love him and continue to love him, and, and hopefully that'll pull them through today. Is the town wild about Tro Trojan mania now, or those tea dogs? Is it? I don't know if anyone's left there today. Yeah. How many do you think's here? Oh, there's, there's, I said about a thousand. I at least. At least. At least? Yeah. Are they still people above me? There's a few above you. Mercy. Robert, thanks. All right. Appreciate you. Robert Hill Trap, criminal district attorney out of San Jacinto County, stopping up here at the radio booth in the Houston Astrodome. We're set to kick off from the 40-yard line. Going to be a high, short kick, taking it to 20. Running horizontally to the middle of the field, looking, now cuts upfield, slips. Falls down on the 24-yard line. Now, last week, Cold Spring beat Belleville 20 to 17. Marble Falls beat Sinton in a rainy, cold game, seven to nothing. South Lake Carroll beat Alpine 61 to nothing last week. Gainesville beat Commerce 35 to 21. It is 21-18 at this game. Handoff, right side, gets about three yards, and that's about it. Gonna bring up second down. Second down and seven, ball on the 27-yard line. Led by quarterback Blaine Clett. The line is big, 250, 200, 200, 210. Back to pass, looking over the middle, fires, no, no. completes the number 80 at the 45-yard line. yard line. Handoff up the middle, maybe a yard or two. No, I don't even think he got that. Down they go, straight up the middle, nothing. Second down and nine from the 44 yard line of the Trojans. over the middle, it may got him in. He opened complete at the 30 to the 25. Down he goes at the 24-yard line. Another first down, as now they're starting their passing attack. First and 10 from the 24-yard line. Six minutes left to go in the third quarter. It's 21-18, the Mustangs over the Trojans. Back to pass again, almost intercepted, incomplete pass. Number 20, Jack Bradford, almost had it. A little behind him, incomplete. minutes 40 seconds left to go in the third quarter. And he's getting up and he's okay. That's number 32, Sean Alexander.
gets some help from number 38, Mordrick Fisher. Coming on the field, number 75, Big John Ivy, 5'9", 220 pound sophomore. We'd like to thank our sponsors making this broadcast possible. McMurray Insurance Agency, East Texas LP Gas Company, J.H. Burns Printing, Holiday Shores Marina and Cafe, East Texas Environmental, Ellisor Realty, and Basic Quality Automotive. Fourth down at six and going far. Back to pass, he's pressured, looking, throws, incomplete. The ball goes over to Cole Spring. Flag down. It's going to be against procedure against the Mustangs. Decline first down Trojans. First and ten, ball on the 22-yard line. Four minutes, 39 seconds left to go in the third period. 21 to 18, Mustangs over the Trojans. One man far right, Parks Fisher in the backfield. Reese got the ball, hands it off up the middle. Look at, look at Fisher go! He gets him a good 14 yards down to about the 37 yard line. Get him, Ray Dog. Number 82, Leonard McKinney coming off the field. Reese would then hand off to Roderick Parks, who takes this one up the field, breaking tackles. He scores on a 45-yard touchdown run, and now it's 25-21 Cold Spring going into the fourth quarter. Point after Tim's up. It's good. Score now is 25-21. to The Trojans are now in the lead. Tom, what's it feel like down there? Well, I'm right in the middle of the band. There you are in the middle of the band. I'm in the middle of the band right now. I can tell it's plenty loud down there. Who do you got in front of you? I've got uh, Roy Street, the band director. How about uh, turn around and play the radio station up there? And, uh, what do you think about the game so far? Well, this is great. This is great. Uh, couldn't be any better unless the score was even one. So. Isn't that fantastic? I guess your kids really enjoy playing in a place like this, right? Oh, it's been a thrill for them. They've been looking forward to it all week. Been so excited they couldn't stand it. Uh, tell us a little bit about how your band did in competition. Well, this year we uh, got a first division from judges. We've never done that before. We also advanced to the uh, third place in area competition, which puts us in about the top 20 of 3A bands in the state of Texas. So they're doing great. That's fantastic. Back to you, Bubba. Okay, thanks. That's uh, Tom Brown out on the field right now. He's up in the band. We'll be uh, getting Tom's uh, sound from his wireless microphone on the field with uh, some of the players and some of the things the coaches are saying uh, to some of the players as we ease a microphone in there. Also, he's going to be going around uh, throughout the crowd and talking to some of those. We are kicking off. Cold Spring kicks it down to the 20. He's up to 25, 30-yard line, out about the 33-yard line. Going to be a first and 10 for Marble Falls. Marble Falls starting quarterback is Blaine Clint. Running back is Joe Potter along with Sean Alexander. At split end is J.F. Atkinson. At wide, at wing back is Brian Starch. At tight end, Heath Nix. Tackle is Zach Potter. Guard is Walker Trudeau, Josh Barber, Bill Burgess, Eli Burgess all rounding out the offensive line. They do have a big offensive line. They stand 5'10", 250. 6'3", 225, 6'3", 200, 5'10", 200 pounds, 6'4", 210. A big offensive line. They run out of the triple veer. Their quarterback, Brian Clint, is good. He has speed. He throws good. He executes the triple veer real well. One time so far at a third down and long, he was a split in and received a pass. He's six foot, 175 pounds. Running the option again. Quarterback still got it. Cuts up field. There he goes. Number 32, Greg Edmond hit him first. One minute, 20 seconds left to go in the third period. Cold Spring now out on top, 25-21. Coming up in just about one minute, we're going to be talking to San Jacinto County Judge. Judge Joe McMurray is here with us. We'll be talking with him during our break at the third quarter. One minute left in that. 
Option play, up the middle, 30, 35. Gets him the first down, close to the first down. He's gonna be about two yards short, over to about the 36 yard line. Number 70, Jarrett Turner, making the stop. Gonna bring up third down now and two. Ball on the 39 yard line, 40 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Cold Spring in the lead for the first time this afternoon. We're live from the Houston Astrodome. I'm Bubba Haley on KETX 92.3 FM. Third down and two from the 39-yard line. I formation, pitch out to the right, looking for a hole, doesn't find one, down he goes. Doesn't get anywhere. Going to bring up fourth down and still two yards for a first down. They have punted a couple of times. They have faked a punt one time, and they have gone for the first down on fourth down twice so far. Judge Joe McMurray, what you think of this? Listen, this is some ball game. Two fine teams, right, Bubba? I can't believe it. Can you? Uh, no, I can't. But you know, uh, they are two fine teams, and as you know better than I do, Cold Springs has been all year a uh, second half team. So I'm I'm looking for great things. I'm sure glad we got got ahead of them. You know, that's one thing I think that uh, about this team is they don't give up. No matter what, yeah. they don't give up. They, they seem to get stronger. They do, and that's what everybody says about it. They, they sure don't get up. They uh, don't give up. Stay with us, Judge. We're in the uh, third period. Just now concluding fourth and final period. Twelve minutes left to go in Class 3A semifinal. The stands are all filled up, and they're standing. Punt standing back on the 30. Going to angle it on the far side. Going to be a good high punt. Going to hit on the 35-yard line, and it's going to take a Marble Falls roll back to about the 41-yard uh, line. Starting offense. Coming on the field for Cold Spring. If they score now, it's Katie bar the door. The emotions are running high. There's nothing even happening right now. It's first and 10, ball on the 41, and half the stands are uh, filled with people that are standing up. Handoff running the option. Up the middle, he's at the 50. Look out, Fisher. He goes down to the 44-yard line. Ray Fisher brought down by number 32. Joe Potter. Another first down for Cole Spring and Ray Fisher. Moving the ball now down to the 44-yard line in the Mustangs end of the field. The spirit's extremely high here in the Houston Astrodome. You can hear the crowd. It's fixing to get louder when we turn to go to Tom Brown. Yes, uh, Bubba, I'm down here with the uh, with our head cheerleaders. I'll let them introduce themselves and tell you what they think about the game. My name is Denise Jackson. And my name is Kelly Presley. And I just hope we really, I hope we beat, beat the Mustang. Yeah. I don't know, I know, we're going to state. <laughs> she said we're going to beat them and go to state. All right. Thanks, Tom. Tom talking to the cheerleaders of uh, Cold Spring. They say they're going all the way to state. It is second down now at about six. And there it goes, Parks for the first down. Parks getting the first down. Tom, I'm going to ask you if you'd leave your mic on down there and then uh, put it in some holes and see what some of these players are, are saying. And let's leave your mic on down on the field and uh, see what kind of audio. Get in amongst them, find out what we got. I might go to you here back and forth. First and ten. Option play coming this way. Quarterback keeps it. Reese looking. Doesn't get anywhere. Maybe a yard. Running the uh, option play. 
They run the uh, triple option, the wide veer. We got two seniors in the backfield. We got one sophomore quarterback who doesn't act like a sophomore quarterback. We got two good receivers on the flankers, uh, two good wide receivers. 19-3A district champion, Cold Spring Trojans, winning Region 3, now in the state semifinals, live in the Astrodome. Second down and eight from the 29-yard line. It goes to Fisher. He's got five yards, close to the 22-yard line. The fans just don't want to sit down here in the Dome as we're in the fourth and final quarter. It's 9.45 left in this ball game. One more game after this. We will be playing the winner of Carroll and Gainesville on December the 19th. We'll give you a score on that game in just a few moments. Cold Spring leading Marble Falls now, and then we'll play the winner of Carroll and Gainesville, which is going on right now. That final game for the Class 3A championship will be December the 19th. It's third down and one from the 22-yard line. Walking an injured player for Marble Falls off the field. Very physical. They are banging heads out there. And now we'll get underway. Marble Falls defense and size, 145, 160, 200 pounds, 200 pounds, 160, 185, 170. They're not real big. Third down and one from the 22. Hand off to Parks, first down. He's still on his feet, close to the 15-yard line. First and 10, Cold Spring. against uh, Cole Spring. It's getting loud in here. Nine minutes to go. Cole Spring leads at 25-21. We need to score here. A five-yard penalty will make it first and 15. Ball on the 21-yard line.
Reese, who also scored on an 89-yard kickoff return, leads the way as the Cold Spring Trojans. 31 to 21. Point after attempts coming up. They're stacked up in the swinging gate. Stacked to the left side, shoulder to shoulder. Now they move in to their regular position. One looks like they're going for the point after one point. They call a timeout. Timeout is called. They want a timeout. And timeout is called. We'll do that point after tip in just a few moments. It's building up, Judge. Uh, Bubba, this is just like we kind of thought it might be a strong second half, and they are a good team, are they not? Tell me a little bit about what everybody's thinking. Even in commissioner's court and around the courthouse, is, is it just Trojan mania? It's, it's exciting everywhere that I go. Uh, you know, even those commissioners get excited about this, see? They're uh, even here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it is an exciting time. I haven't been to that many of the games, but I sure am proud of KETX for bringing this uh, fun game back back home, St. Santa County in Cold Spring. Well, thank you very much. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Good, good you, you couldn't have created a court order and kept <laughs> me away from this Astrodome. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Judge. You all have done a good Pre job. If you want to stay up in our booth, you're more than welcome. If thank not, you can head on down. Thank you, Appreciate you very much. That's uh, St. Santa County Judge Joe McBurk. We'll see you at the parade, Judge. Yeah. See you down down. Point after attempt. Ball's down. It's up. Let's hear what they're talking about. Okay, we'll do. The penalty being assessed on the kickoff. We're uh, going to be kicking off from the 45-yard line. Seven fifty-five left to go. In the ball game, Cold Spring out in front, 32 to 21. The fans standing up once again, kicking from the 45. Short kick, going back to about the 10. 15, 17, down he goes. Cold Spring defense coming on the field. give you a final in the uh, Carroll game. Carroll has defeated Gainesville 63 to 7. So man, the winner of this game has SL Carroll to deal with. We'll tell you more about them in a little bit. First and 10. Rolling around to the right side, looking, pressure's on, still looking. Jukes throws long and across field. Everybody's up. Almost intercepted. Incomplete. Tip drill. Everybody going for it. Almost intercepted by Arthur Reese. 
in and out of his hands, he would have had all the field to go. 7.42, that's a go in the ball game. It's 32-21, the Trojans out in lead right now. Carroll, 14-0, defeating Gainesville, who is 12-2, 63-7. Winner of this game plays Carroll. Handoff, it's red! Loss of about four yards. That's number 62, Jeff Major. He read that all the way. Gonna drop him back at about four yards now. Gonna be third down, 14 from the 15-yard line. At free safety, Charles Parks. At strong safety, Jason Scott. At right corner is Joe Goffney. At left corner is Jack Bradford. Middle linebacker is Bordrick Fisher. Strong linebacker is Jarrett Turner. Third down and 14 from the 15-yard line. Back to pass. Looking. Throws. Complete at the 33-yard line. That's number 23. Joe Frank Atkinson. Wide receiver getting the first down, moving the ball up to about the 33-yard line, first and 10. Weak side linebacker for Cole Spring is Daryl Mims. Defensive tackle, Don Aldridge and John Ivey. Defensive ends are Jeff Major and Terry Williams. First and 10, the ends are split, I formation. Quarterback gives it to the second man through. He can't find a hole. Down he'll go. Loss of one. Number 66 and number 30, Rodney Harrison and Don Aldridge. For the first time in about six games, I have never seen a Cold Spring Trojan down on the field, but we have one right now. We'll give you his number in just a few moments as everybody is quiet in the stands and uh, standing up, waiting to see who is injured and how bad. Six twenty-nine left to go in the ball game. It's thirty-two twenty-one. Trojans over the Mustangs. Dead silence on this side of the field right now. All the uh, Trojans down on one knee, looking at their player that's injured. Up he comes. You'll hear the crowd. That looks like number sixty-two. Jeff Major. Jeff Major's a senior, 5'10", 166 pounds. See how bad it looks for Jeff. He is walking, uh, he's got his arms around the shoulders of the trainers, but uh, Jeff look, looks to be okay. He is walking off, favoring his, uh, looks like his right leg. We have Tom Brown down on the field. Uh, Tom will get right over and uh, talk to the trainer and find out what the problem is. Uh, Tom, let me know when you got something and uh, I'll be listening for you. I will do. Second down and 11 from the 32-yard line. Trojans have the ball. Reverse. Pitch back. They're going to throw it. He throws from the 20. A home run ball down the field. Knocked away. It's still in the air. Intercepted at the 30. 40. It is Reese at the 50. The 45. The 40. 30. 20. Flags go down. Parks gets about three. 
three yards up the middle. Get an update. Uh, I believe we got a few minutes uh, on uh, Jeff Major. Uh, Tom's right there in front of you, Tom. Uh, right. Uh, that was an injured player with Jeff Major, and it appeared that he had sprained his knee. Uh, he said he looked like he'll probably might be out for the rest of the game, but he said he'll probably be ready to go next week. Thanks. All right, thank you, Tom. Uh, a sprained knee, and it looks like Jeff Major will be out for the rest of the game, but he'll be all right for next week. Hand off up the middle, it gets him a couple of yards, and that's all. Second down and 16 from the 25-yard line. Five minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the game. We'll be playing Carroll next, a big 63-7 to winner over Gainesville. The winner of this game plays Carroll December the 19th, probably right here. Second down and 16 from the 25-yard line. Strong side right. Option play. Quarterback keeps it. Maybe about three yards over about the 25-yard line. Most of the fans still on their feet. And it'll probably stay that way the entire game. You're listening to Class 3A semifinals live from the Houston Astrodome on KETX 92.3 FM. It is third down and 15 from the 26. Looking to throw, gets out of the pocket, looks, he's in trouble. Down he'll go at the 20. Going to be a loss of about six yards. Going to bring it back to the 20-yard line. Now it's going to be fourth down and about a half a mile. Still, the starting offense is in for Cold Spring. Reese coming in with a play from the bench. He'll be standing back on about his 10 to punt. The receiver will be standing at midfield on about the 50. Snap, good snap, plenty of time. Good high end over end kick, kick but it's short. Gonna take a cold spring roll, thank goodness. Makes a good roll, look at it roll. shaking his hand on the field like I can't believe it. Junior Reese, fantastic game so far this afternoon. First and 10, strong side right, I formation. First and 10 from the 39. Quarterback's rolling out to the right side, looking to throw, throws it. Completed the 50, 45, out of bounds, he'll go at the 43-yard line. First down, pickup of 18 yards on that play. Starting offense is Blaine Clett at quarterback, 6 foot, 175 pounds. Running back is Joe Potter, 5'11", 170 pounds. Also running back is Sean Alexander, 175 pound junior. Split in is J.F. Atkinson, 135 pound senior. Wingback is Brian Sterich, six foot, 160 pounds. First and 10 from the 43-yard line, handoff up the middle, number 32. Sean Alexander picks up about six. We'll see where they mark it. It looks like it's gonna be down to the 35-yard line of the Trojans. They have a big offensive line. The tackle, Zach Potter, is 6'3", 225. The guard is Walker Trudeau, he's 5'10", 250. The center is Josh Barber, 6'3", 200. The guard is Bill Burgess, 5'10", 200 pounds. And the tackle is Eli Burgess, 6'4", 210. 
back to pass. Rolling around the left side, looking, throws to the right side, got a man open, completed the 10, five. He's shirt down and he's down on the one. He fumbles the ball into the end zone, but he's down on the one yard line. Grabbed by number 20, Jack Bradford, and held until number 12, Jason Scott, can get up there and assist him. And then when they tackled him, he fumbled the ball into the end zone as he tried to reach across the goal line. The referees are talking about it now, but they have the ball marked down on the one yard line. Referees are conferring in the very corner of the end zone. They did tackle him. He did try to stretch the ball out. When the ball hit, it sprung out of his hands and went in to the end zone and out of bounds. They're talking about what they're gonna do. It is gonna be a first down. And it looks like a first and goal from the one yard line. Two minutes, 42 seconds left in the game. It's 32-21, Gold Spring is leading. This is class 3A semifinal. The winner of this game plays Carroll in the state finals. Up the middle, touchdown. Marble Falls scores from the one yard line. It's 32-27 with the point after still to come. This game is far from over. surrounding counties. Ellisor Realty invites you to contact them first when placing your listing and receive a complimentary map of Texas. For all your real estate needs, remember Ellisor Realty. Be sure to go by and talk to Nona or Johnny Ellisor at the corner of Highway 150 West and FM 2025 in Cold Spring. They're there seven days a week from 7 at 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. seven days a week at Ellisor Realty, corner of Highway 150 West and FM 2025. If you ever thought about real estate in the Lake Livingston area, see Ellisor Realty first. And if you want to put in a listing, mobile home, acreage, house, give them a call. 653-4662. 653-4662. Also, thanks to Holiday Shores Marina and Cafe on FM 224. If you haven't discovered this place yet, let me invite you over there. They have beautiful A-frame cabins right on the water. They're clean, all you need, they're fully furnished for you, is to bring food and fun. Go to the grocery store, get you some groceries, or you don't even have to do that. You can eat right there at uh, the cafe, which some features some of the best cheeseburgers, chicken fried steak, Cajun fish and chicken, some of the most delicious foods, sourdough cinnamon rolls, dinner rolls, hamburgers and cheeseburgers are made on cinnamon roll, on sourdough buns. You'll love the cooking at the cafe. They're open 7 a.m. through 9 p.m. Wednesday through Sunday, breakfast all day. If you want some reservations, if you want to know about uh, RV hookups, what all they offer at Holiday Shores Marine and Cafe, they're on FM 224. Seven tenths of a mile off of Highway 156, only eight miles north of Cold Spring. Call Royce or Mary at 377 2696. 377 2696. 
9-6. That's Holiday Shore, Marina, and Cafe. You'll love that place. Go by there and see them. 240 left to go in the ball game. 32 to 29. Cold Spring leads. Onside kick. Taken at the 45, 50 yard line. Still on his feet. 45. Down he goes at about the 47 yard line. That's number 20, Jack Bradford. 5'7, 145 pounds. Brings it up for great field position. Marble Falls hoping for a turnover there and maybe a fumble with the onside kick. Didn't work. Cold Spring has the ball. They have two minutes, 35 seconds left to go in this ball game. Broderick, Parks, Arthur, Reese, Ray Fisher in the backfield. It goes to Parks. He gets about six, seven, eight, nine. Go, go, boy, go. Just keeps on carrying those players with him. Great run. Going to be second down now in a yard. Pick up a nine on that. Second down and one. Two minutes, 20 seconds left to go in this 3A semifinal contest between Marble Falls and Cold Spring. We will be playing Carroll. They beat Gainesville 63 to seven. 63 to seven. Carroll will be playing in the state finals against the winner of this game. Pitch out to Fisher. Can't find him a hole, and he'll be pushed back a few yards. Tom, tell me uh, the, the status on Jeff Major. I, I don't see he's sitting on the bench anymore. He's getting up walking around. What about his knee? Uh, Jeff got up and uh, moved right after I talked to him, and I may well find him either, so I guess he's not in too much pain. Uh, man, he's probably too excited. I, but I think he's along the sideline here watching the game. It seems pretty intense down there right now. Very intense. Tom Brown out on the field for us with 142 left to go in the game. Tom, you're going to be a busy man here in just a few minutes as we uh, do interviews with players and coaches. You want to make sure that you get a hold of uh, Parks and Aldridge and uh, Fisher and Reese and uh, Monahan and Henry and some of those key players and coaches because we're going to be talking to you quite extensively and you might gather them all around you uh, towards the end of the game. And uh, first down, Coles. Well, still had, looks like they measured the change. There ain't got... First down, first and 10, 142 left to go in this ball game. Everybody's standing up. I'd bet there's over uh, 1,000 people here, most definitely from San Jacinto and surrounding counties. If there's anybody listening on the courthouse square to our remote, it isn't probably very many people. I think they're all here. I can't wait to get back to Cold Spring, though. They had $6,500 in pre-sale tickets. $6,500 in pre-sale tickets. We'll be talking with Dr. Larry Bennett, superintendent of Cold Spring School, in just a few moments. First and 10. Handoff up the middle. Gets about three yards the hard way, and that's it. Going to be running plays. 11 left to go in this ball game. Well, Dr. Bennett, you get the glory. You're going to get to be up here at the end of the game and, and get all the, all the good stuff. All the glory is down on the field there, Bubba. We really appreciate everybody back home, all our support. These kids are showing you what exemplifies Trojan pride. They come in there and they tell them their theme is nobody. They come on the field, they say nobody, and that means nobody can beat them. And that's what they believe. So when they're out there and I hear them hollering, nobody, Nobody. That's what that means. Nobody can beat them. Nobody can beat them. And that's, their, that's the way they feel. And we, we feel the same way, and we're just so proud of them. Tell me a little bit about this team as individuals. You they're, know them. Well, they're just a fine bunch of young men. They, they have a lot of respect for each other. They, they're focused on what their job is. They have a lot of fun, but they know their job, and they take after it. Just a fine bunch of young men. They really Very are. disciplined. Yes, they are disciplined. Uh, they, they know exactly what, if you watch them whenever somebody's hurt, they get on a knee and stay out of the way. They're very respectful. Uh, they've been coached well. Their coaching staff has done a tremendous job. And, uh, 
Uh, they're just a good bunch of kids. They're fun to be around. It, it, it's really remarkable how strong they are in the third and fourth quarters. That's that good off-season program and conditioning program, brother. Really good. Thank you. We enjoy it. Thank you. If you want to stay here with us, you're more than welcome to. We'll talk to you. That's Larry Bennett, superintendent of the Cold Spring School. Hand off to Fisher. He doesn't get anywhere out of that. Maybe a couple of yards, but he does get to run off the clock a little bit. We still got uh, a minute left in the ball game. By no means is it over with because we're fairly close to midfield. We're on about the 39-yard uh, line. One minute, six seconds left to go in the game. It is 32 to 29. The Cold Spring Trojans leading the Marble Falls Mustang, 32 to 29. We're live in the Houston Astrodome. As they still say and have up on the board, the eighth wonder of the world. We're live on KETX 92.3 FM. Proud to be bringing you the semifinal game. The winner of this game plays Carroll next Saturday. We'll give you that place. We'll probably be right here in this same booth coming up uh, on December the 19th. Third down and 12 on the 39-yard line. We're in the middle of a timeout. Let me sneak in and tell you real quick about Basie's Quality Automotive. If you're looking for somebody to take care of your car, try Tim Basie. He's ASE Master Certified. If you need car repaired or any work or questions on your car, you call Tim Basie. I'll tell you more about Basie's Quality Automotive in just a second. Third down and 12 from the 39. One man far left. They're going to the right. Little mix up in the backfield and nothing. One minute, one second left to go. Timeout is called by Marble Falls. Tim Basie is ASE Master Certified. That means automotive service excellence. And you really do get automotive service excellence when you take your automotive needs and repairs to the very capable team at Basie's Quality Automotive. For all your automotive needs, be sure to consult with Tim Basie or the Basie team. They have tune-ups, engine repair and replacement. They're certified air conditioning and heating service. They're transmission service and repair, rear axle service and repair, and electrical repair. In other words, they do it all. For friendly service, quality work, and very competitive cost, please be sure to call or go by and talk to Tim Basie at Basie's Quality Automotive. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., call him at 653-2020. 653-2020. That's Basie's Quality Automotive, conveniently located between the courthouse and the high school in Cold Spring. Go by and thank Tim Basie for bringing you this ball game live from the Houston Astrodome. It is fourth down and 12 from the 39. Standing on the Oiler helmet at midfield, Arthur Reese will be punting. Good snap, plenty of time, good high kick. Fair catch called at the eight. They got 55 seconds to march that ball all the way down the field. The quarterback, Blaine Clint, has 14 touchdowns. He can run and throw. In a pinch, they'll put him in split in and they'll throw to him. He's about 46% so far this season with his passes. He's been intercepted seven times through 13 games. He can run and he can throw. He splits his ends to the right. One man in the backfield. Quarter black. Back to pass. Looking, throws over the middle, complete at the 15. Shuffle pass back to the 20, 25, out to the 27-yard line. A little butt hook about 10 yards. He was wide open. He caught it and then pitched back to a receiver. And he takes it an extra 10 yards going to be moving the ball up to the 27-yard line. 46 seconds left to go. First and 10 from the 27-yard line. They kill the clock. He threw the ball down. Clock stops. Second down and 10. They're on the 27-yard line on their end of the field. They still got a long way to go. They have 43 seconds to do it in. A field goal would tie it. A touchdown would win it for Marble Falls. The defense playing real loose, playing the pass. 
Ball's on the 27. Everybody in the dome is standing up. Pitch out, reverse, pitch back to the quarterback again, looking to throw. He's in trouble. He's looking. He's at the 20. He'll run it. 30, 35, out of bounds. Whoa, at the 40-yard line. He gets a first down. Pick up of 13. Another Cold Spring player down on the field. Don Aldridge is down on the 23-yard line. 31 seconds to go. First and 10 now from the 40. Timeout. We have two players down. They are banging heads out there. We have Don Aldridge for Cold Spring down on the field, and we also have a player for Marble Falls that's down on the field. Hey, Tom, is that Santa Claus you're standing next to? Yes, it is. Well, tell Santa Claus we want to win state for Christmas. Uh, he would like to have a big ho-ho-ho and a state win. Ho-ho-ho, oh, 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 Merry Christmas. A state win right here. I'm going to try to see if I can present the winning ball to him out there. That uh, Santa Claus uh, even drove the bus down for the Cold Spring Trojans today. I saw that. Nothing like having Santa Claus drive your bus down here, is it? That's right and got him on the side of the field. And gonna present the winning ball to the team. As Aldridge gets up, he's walking off under his own power, slowly, but walking off. Don Aldridge has been uh, scouted here by many of uh, a scout from various major colleges. He is a, a great player. He uh, is big as well. He's a senior, six foot one, 225 pounds. He'll play center, he'll play tackle, and he is great on defense, and he is sitting on the sidelines right now. And the other player for Marble Falls, number 74, Walter Trudeau, 258-pound tackle, walking off slow, but under his own power. What's the feeling down on the field, Tom? As you can hear, it's pure excitement down here. Uh, a lot of anticipation on uh, seeing this game come to an end. 31 the Trojans on the winning side of the scoreboard. 31 seconds left to go in this game. It is first and 10, strong side left. Quarterback going left, looking to throw. Throws it middle of the field, complete at the 45 down. And out of bounds he goes at about the 47. Going to be a pickup of about eight yards. Clock still running, 20, 19, 18, 17. Clock still running. They don't have any more time out. It's going to be second and three from the 47. The quarterback backs up and kills the clock with nine seconds to go. 32 to 29, Cole Spring in the lead. Nine seconds left to go. It'll be third down in three. They have 53 yards to go. Number 23. Urban Major pumping up the crowd, telling them to cheer. Everybody is on their feet. Most of them have red and white pom-poms. About one play left. The backs are way back. Here goes the crowd. This is it. From the 47-yard line, Cold Spring leads by three. Third and three. Back to pass. Looking to the right. Throws a long.
50-yard line, and this pandemonium on the field. I'm gonna see if I can catch Ray Fisher here, okay? All right. Ray, I've got Ray Fisher here with me. Okay. Fantastic game, Ray. I oh, thank you. We were behind like we were last week, but we put our head back together and got to the game. All right, guys. That was a great game, all the way to state, right? Yes, in the sir. finals, in the finals. Yo, and that's, and that soaked in, you're in the finals against South Lake Carroll. Yes, sir, it made me real happy. I'm right, real happy. All right. All right. That was Ray Fisher, the fullback, number 34. Keep on, I'll just give it to you. Okay. I've got with me here number 65, Chad McQueen, one of our linemen. Chad, what do you think about the game? It was one hell of a fire game. He said it was one great game. Way to go, Chad. Eric. Bob, I've got number 80 of the tight end, Eric Benestante here with me. Eric, what about it? Uh, it's great. There ain't nothing else to say about it. You guys did a fantastic job. Listen to that crowd as they all come over on the far side of the field. The crowd isn't leaving. They're staying. They're not going anywhere. They're just standing. Tom Brown's on the field. We'll be talking with him as he gets various people to talk to and various players and uh, some of the coaches. Tom. Bubba, I've got uh, some of Coach Peebusho's sons with me here, and I believe this is David? Gary. Gary. Gary, what do you think? It was exciting, I tell you. It was just about as great as victory as last week. We, we just played a sorry second quarter, actually, you know. Not sorry, but we didn't execute. Defense kind of got like today, but hey, it's great. It's great, hey, isn't it? Take a win any way you can get you it. got right? that right. Greg? Yeah. This is Greg. Well, I tell you what, this team's been overcoming adversity all year long. It takes, makes you proud to be a part of it because uh, I tell you what, come back twice in the playoffs like they have against good football teams shows it what the character they got. There's a lot to be said with the community of Cold Spring and his coaching staff and the, and the entire team for, for the way they've overcome that. We appreciate it, Greg. Thanks a lot. Now the school song. they come out and do a job and they did it it's great they did a wonderful job everybody's kind of heading off now if you can uh, uh, find you a coach here real quick to talk to we'll go out with him on in just a few moments okay I've got coach James Sykes here with me James we're live on the radio what do you think oh we sweated that now secondary probably played the worst game they played all year we had people out of position all night long and it just somehow we managed to play good enough in the offense in the second half to win this game because our secondary really didn't play well. But it was a great win, wasn't it? It was a super win. I would take it any way we can get it. All right, congratulations to you guys. All right, thanks, Tom. Great job. Okay, thank you, Bubba. And uh, all I can say is we're going to be ready for South Lake Carroll. Thanks, Tom. Tom Brown did a uh, tremendous job. We'll see you back up here in the booth. Tom, thanks again for everything you did out on the field. Uh, Tom Brown doing some uh, interviews from the field. We definitely want to thank uh, our sponsors who, who made this broadcast possible. They are 
Ellisor Realty. Ellisor Realty is located on the corner of Highway 150 West and FM 2025 in Cold Spring, family owned and operated real estate company. Call Ellisor Real Estate if you need any or all of your real estate needs in the Lake Livingston area. 653-4662. 653-4662. Thanks to Frank McMurray and McMurray Insurance Agency on Highway 150 in the corner of Live Oak and Cold Spring. McMurray Insurance is your independent insurance agent, so they can look around, see what's best for you, get the best coverage and the best price, too. Tailor-made to your exact insurance needs. McMurray Insurance Agency, they're located on Highway 150 and Live Oak in Cold Spring. Also, we would like to thank East X LP Gas Company, Danny Lamb in Cold Spring, located one of the greatest locations I think I have ever seen, uh, located uh, very conveniently on the highway intersection of 156 and 150 in Cold Spring. They're your full service gas company, serving all the propane needs for residential, commercial of the entire Lake Livingston area presently offering propane gas at five cent discount on each gallon for first time customers. Call Danny Lamb right now in Cleveland. The number is 713-592-4950. He not only serves San Jacinto, but the entire Lake Livingston area and surrounding counties. So in Cleveland, you have your own number. He'll pay you the call, 713-592-4950. And the Cold Spring number is 653-3080. 409-653-3080. Thanks to Holiday Shores Marine and Cafe, Mary and Royce Eubanks always been behind this cold tree, Cold Spring Trojans team from the first, and now all the way to state. One of the neatest places I've ever seen on Lake Livingston. They got beautiful A-frame cabins. Get a pen and paper. I'll let you call and talk to Royce or Mary about uh, rates, and they're very clean. Uh, all you need to do is bring groceries and fun. Food and fun, that's it. Everything else is supplied for you. It's the only full service marina open to the public on the west side of Lake Livingston. The cafe is open 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Now, expanded hours, Wednesday through Sunday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Serving breakfast all day, lunch and dinner, featuring Mary's home-baked sourdough cinnamon rolls, buns and dinner rolls. Don't forget their Thursday night special, all the catfish you can eat, $6.95. For information, reservations, Holiday Shores Marine and Cafe is 377-2696. 377-2696 on FM 224, eight miles north of Cold Spring, seven-tenths of a mile from Highway 156. Thanks to J.H. Burns Printing in Cold Spring. Fine printing at fair prices, and John is your hometown printer. Let's move on now to Class 3A. One state semifinalist figured to be their top-ranked South Lake Carroll, and the Dragons blasted their way into the state championship round, and I do mean blasted, in their win over Gainesville last Friday night at Pennington Field in Bedford. Didn't take the Dragons long to score. Their first offensive play following a Gainesville punt, Brent Bonzak would take this pass from quarterback Will Mantu and sprint for a 79-yard touchdown pass, and the Dragons would not look back. It was 7-0 Dragons' first play in the second quarter. Dane Johnson takes this pass from Mantooth deep down the left side and leaps into the end zone. A 47-yard score, and the Dragons are up 14-0. It was 28-0 when Gainesville would get on the scoreboard what would prove to be their only time of the night. Rodney Oates up the middle and down to the left sideline, 93 yards on this touchdown run. It's a 28-7 Dragon lead at the half. Gainesville with a bit of a hope, but that's all they would have because South Lake Carroll would bust it open in the third quarter. Kyle Smith takes this interception in for a touchdown. The Dragons go on to route Gainesville to win the 3A state semifinal 63-7. Carroll figured to be in the state championship round. The Cold Spring Trojans, however, did not figure to be in the state championship matchup, at least not by many folks, but the Trojans are there after eliminating Marble Falls last Saturday afternoon in the Astrodome. In the first quarter, the Trojans get on the scoreboard first. Quarterback Arthur Reese gives to his tailback Ray Fisher, who starts around the right end, then breaking back left. He breaks several tackles to score from 24 yards out. 
The extra point try was no good, but it was 6-0 Trojans. In the second quarter, Marble Falls quarterback Blaine Klett will pitch out to his tailback, Sean Alexander. He races around the left end untouched. It's a four-yard run. The extra point puts the Mustangs on top, 7-6. To it was 21-12 Marble Falls at the half, but here come the Trojans in the third quarter. It's Reese giving to Fisher one more time up the middle to cap a scoring drive. And seven yards out, it's a 21-18 contest. Reese would then hand off to Roderick Parks, who takes this one up the field, breaking tackles. He scores on a 45-yard touchdown run, and now it's 25-21 Cold Spring going into the fourth quarter. Reese, who also scored on an 89-yard kickoff return, leads the way as the Cold Spring Trojans move to the state championship round for the first time in school history. They hold off Marble Falls 32-29. So there's your state championship matchup, Class 3A. Top-ranked and undefeated South Lake Carroll and Cold Spring at 14-1. and one. The two teams do battle this Saturday night. It'll be the final high school football game of 1992. Carroll and Cold Spring meet at Floyd Casey Stadium on the Baylor campus in Waco. Stay with us now. Coming up on the Extra, we'll take a closer look at this matchup, not only from the teams involved, but of a very special person involved with the Cold Spring program. The Alamo High School Extra will continue in a moment. Welcome back to the Alamo High School Extra. Now, we were talking about Class 3A in the state championship matchup. One team certainly expected there, South Lake Carroll, and the other team, perhaps surprising some folks, Cold Spring. We took a close look at the two teams, starting off with the top-ranked team in the state. Here's our Metroplex correspondent, George Dunham. The South Lake Carroll Dragons, one of the most dominating high school football teams in the state of Texas over the last six years. In fact, no one has a better record since 1987. The Dragons have only lost three games in that period. Earlier this year, Carroll shattered the record for most consecutive wins in the regular season, a mark that now stands at 61 straight. Only once this season has a team come within two touchdowns of the Carroll Dragons. And this week, South Lake Carroll will go for their second state title in five years. A matchup with Cold Springs Saturday night in Waco. Head coach Bob Ledbetter has been the designer of this perfection on the football field. You know, they've been under a lot of uh, uh, pressure this year. And I think any time that you're able to, uh, you know, stay as number one all year and, and end up in this position, I think that puts a great deal more pressure on you. And these kids have come through a lot of... Uh, you know, tough situations. Uh, they've been able to uh, come through all that hype over that streak, and then they were able to come through the Gainesville the second time around, which is tough. And uh, they've been able to focus real well all year. And I've been real proud of these kids and the way they have approached everything mentally. The city of South Lake is unique, a small town tucked between Dallas and Fort Worth. Oh, well, you know everybody. I mean, it's a small little town. But it's great. I, I like it, and everybody around here is real nice, and, you know, you're about friends with everybody. The Dragons have set a new Texas high school football playoff record by scoring 277 points in the postseason, but the Dragons are not overconfident, knowing that Cold Spring might be the toughest challenge yet. This year, Carroll High School moved to its new location here just off of Farm Road 1709 in South Lake, And by the end of the week, the Dragons hope to add a new trophy to that new trophy case. For the Alamo High School Extra, I'm George Dunham. Thanks very much, George. And like most folks have said, South Lake Carroll was supposed to be in the Class 3A state championship round. And after their blowouts of Alpine in the quarterfinals and Gainesville last Friday night in the state semifinals, some folks have said whoever faces Carroll in the state championship round would probably need some divine intervention to have a chance to win the state championship. Well, I'm not that sure that Cold Spring might not be getting some help from somewhere else as we took a close look at what's going on down in San Jacinto County. Man, Coach P, Coach P told me, you know, he meant a lot to everybody in Cold Spring. He's something like a father, me and my brother. You know, we have rides and stuff. He come pick us up and help us out and things. And, uh, and uh, he, you know, he really, he really showed us what life, through football, he really showed us what life all about through football. Ed Pivato was a man who helped make the Cold Spring Trojans a state power in Class 3A. Coach Pivato was loved by his players, loved by many of the folks down in San Jacinto County, in the county seat of Cold Spring, and certainly, of course, loved by his wife Janice and his family, which included seven children. You would have had to have known my husband to appreciate the charisma and the power he exuded. And that came from the fact 
that anybody he cared about, he cared about wholeheartedly. There was no um, halfway emotion in my husband. He either did or he didn't. And these kids came to accept that as absolute, that he was, he loved them absolutely and completely. When they screw up, he, he loved them and chastised them. When they did good, he loved them and patted them on the back. Ed Pivato had a heart condition that was a risk going into the 1992 season. Doctors warned him it might be fatal if he continued to coach, but Pivato accepted the risk and paid the price. On September 21st, just past three weeks in the season, Coach Pivato died of a heart attack, leaving the folks and the players of Cold Spring crushed. But do right mean, uh, Coach Pivotal used to tell us do right mean, you know, not only do right on the football field, but do right in classroom and um, at home, you know, out on the, in the world. You know, he said when you grow up, you know, you're going to need to do right. And that's what he told us and that's what he taught us to do right. Regardless of what happens, this, this football season is my husband's. These kids are doing this because they're winners and they're champions, and they learn to believe in themselves enough to do this because of what my husband taught them. A truly heartwarming story down in San Jacinto County and in the county seat, Cold Spring, as the Trojans prepare for the state 3A championship. And certainly credit has to go to interim head coach Roger Henry and his staff for keeping the Trojans together, as well as the power of Pivotal Power.